Paris, city of love, romance, and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too, but ever since that day, the day of the murder, I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royal now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was, the palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes, what is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... <laughs> Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carchon! He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he...
Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. The costume killer. At least that's what I'd called him. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. Carchon had been shot. Carchon had been shot. In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. A bust of Pierre Carchon, humble servant of La France. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. Pierre Carchon again. His eyes seemed to follow me around the room. Pierre Carchon was stiff for the last time. It was a boat ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. When I was a little girl, Papa used to take me on the Bateau Mouche as a treat. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder and I needed to find them. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. There was a tiny hole in the tabletop. Part of the inlay had been chipped away. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. A medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. She was deep in conversation. She totally ignored me. Imelda was on the phone to the police. Poor guys. I needed to hurry with my investigation before they arrived. It was the way out. A beautiful, expensive, antique way out, but the way out nevertheless.